There is always one particular scene in Jurassic Park Lost World, the second film in the franchise, that always rubbed me the wrong way. It's the scene where the compies team up and kill Dieter Stark. I always thought that it was so ridiculous, but after many years and after researching, I've come to understand how much sense that scene from the Lost World actually made. Dieter worked for Injun as a hunter who ironically became the hunted. He was Roland's first mate and is introduced properly, taking Eddie's line from the novel when a Comsognathus approaches the men. He scared it, boasting after that now they had a reason to fear man. It was Dieter who had been responsible for keeping an eye on the dinosaurs that Nick Van Owen and the others freed from their cages while he had fallen asleep. He was the one that was foolish enough to go off so far away from the group just to take a piss. That part right there still doesn't make any sense to me, but we're here to talk about the compy scene. So the first compy that he saw, or the compy that gave him a fright, seemed to have been the same one that he had shocked with a cattle prod, since it immediately recognized the instrument. Dieter and his Sylvester Stallone-looking self found that he was lost in the forest. I mean, is he that bad at directions that he can't tell which way he came from, only from a few feet away? I mean, you think with him being a hunter, his first instinct would be to know look down at the ground to where his footprints were, but oh well. Also, a link is, will be in the description for the scene specifically. It's on YouTube, so you guys can go over and uh, click on that link to watch it before you continue the rest of this video. So after he takes a big tumble, the compies converge upon him. The reason that they do this is because he is isolated and he's down. Standing to his full height, the compies realize that he's a healthy, formidable creature. But like vultures, compies are opportunists. And as soon as Dieter fell, he was immediately incapacitated, at least in their perception. And his head and neck were low enough to the ground that they took charge. Now, even though I was really little when I saw the scene, I was sensible enough to know that he did not sustain considerable injury from these little critters. Sure, their bites are nasty, and at most it would feel like a powerful sharp clothespin on your skin or something, but they barely did much, and you can see this because he gets up after overpowering them very easily and walks away. So you saw there that he charges after them several times and they seem to taunt him by constantly following him and standing in a line waiting for him. Then something weird happens. Later on when we see him, he gets very panicky and then begins to become afraid of the compies. That's a huge difference from how it was before. If these creatures like chickens, all you have to do is take several rocks or run up to them and step on them to kill them. So first of all, why was he running scared and then why were they so easily able to kill him in the end? Then I got the answer that made this scene make all the sense in the world when I read the Michael Crichton books. In the Michael Crichton books, a compie's bite is venomous. In the books, the compie's saliva contains a venom with high concentrations of serotonin, which can trigger allergic reactions. Their venom also induces a narcotic effect on the victim, which leads to symptoms of sleepiness and drowsiness and possible feelings of euphoria. When I read the novel, the scene came together. Dieter was able to overpower the compies before the effects of the venom had taken hold. After he threw off the compies, they weren't taunting him. They were waiting for their venom to take effect, just like Komodo dragons do when they bite their prey. When you also consider that one compie's venom is lethal enough as it is, you begin to understand why Dieter was able to be overpowered so quickly having over a dozen compies bite him at once. This also explained why he kept falling down and seemed unable to get up several times. It even further explained why he became panicky and afraid of the compies. He realized to his horror what was happening to him. The narcotic venom was almost acting as a paralyzing agent, causing parts of his body to slow down, his motor functions to cease. How do you think you would feel if an overwhelming, debilitating sleepiness were to come over you while animals were waiting around you that you knew wanted to eat you the moment you fell asleep or became disabled against your will? When he fell the second time, Dieter looked so out of it. I remember screaming at the TV for him to get up. He didn't lose any blood and didn't have any broken bones, so I didn't understand why, even at that young age, why he was being such an idiot. 
I also knew at that young age that adrenaline should have kicked in when you were scared. But now looking back at that same scene when Dieter had fallen the second time in the water, <laughs> he was sky high. You can tell he was so out of it because when the compie hopped on his shoulder, he looked up at it as if he didn't even recognize what it was until it started attacking. Then, to put salt in the wound, all the compies jumped on him and gave him another corporate lethal dose of venom on top of the one he already received. You can see him running weakly when he gets up. You can see him looking back at them in fear, as if not really seeing them. When you get sleepy and your body starts to shut down, you probably notice that your eyesight begins to become blurry or you start hallucinating slightly. Not only did Dieter have to deal with the fear of losing his motor functions, but also the fear of not being able to really see his attackers. He was literally running blind. You can also hear him wheezing slightly when he climbs over the log before his final moments. And with his motor functions shutting down, it is possible that he experienced a slight allergic reaction from the bites as well, which could have also caused his airways to swell shut. By the time he fell over the log, he probably was unable to move while the compies ate their way through him with no contention. Reviewing all of that really made me feel sorry for the man. I will admit at first I didn't feel sorry for him because I thought he was just plain stupid and he deserved to die. <laughs> But that must have been a really horrific experience to lie there screaming, completely unable to move. Those compies having venomous saliva was never really addressed in the movies, at least not to my knowledge, but when you discover certain information from reading the novels, a lot of things in the movies make sense. This is why I would really implore you guys who love the Jurassic Park movies to read the novels or at least listen to the audiobooks. I myself listened to the audiobooks, and in the description box, there are links to the first and second novels. Well, anyways, I'm so glad I was able to get to the bottom of that, and hopefully that makes sense to you guys, too, who are also equally as annoyed when watching that scene. Thanks so much for watching, guys. This has been Altiori. You ask, we answer.